When building a PC, there's so many things to consider and storage is always a big one. So how do you get the very best bang for buck when it comes to your system and storing all of those glorious games? Well, Seagate think that they have the answer. Let's do this. When building a system, some people prefer to go with a SATA SSD. Some prefer to go with NVMe for the very best speeds. And even then, you've got the choice of do you go for a small drive with a large hard drive, or do you just simply go all out? And while there's no definitive answer, based on the polls that we did, the general consensus said that they'd rather have a good-sized NVMe drive, and that's it. And while that will give you the very best speeds, it generally comes at a little bit of a premium. The other option, and I guess the cheapest balance, has normally been to grab a large SATA-based SSD, which, while quicker than a conventional hard drive, will still be bottlenecked by the interface. Even if going for a top-spec SATA drive, like a Samsung 860 EVO, well, with that, you're still only gonna get around 550 megabytes per second read speeds and around 520 megabytes a second write. And for a typical one terabyte drive, you'll be looking in the region of around 100 pounds in the UK or $120 in the US plus taxes. Well, this is where Seagate reached out to us and we're, I guess, stupidly excited about their new range of Barracuda Q5 M.2 SSDs with an aim of taking on standard SATA SSDs in terms of both speeds and that all important price. So let's just jump right into some of the main features that the Q5 drives have going for them. First, the price of them. Well, it's amazing. I mean, when did M.2 drives get cheaper than the standard SATA 2.5 inch drives? No, seriously, can anyone tell me when that happened as, I don't know, maybe I missed the memo. The next feature and probably, I guess an obvious one for most people, but still pretty much one of my favorites, no cables. That's right folks, no SATA data or power, and damn sure no silly little RGB cables to plug into anywhere. Yes, team group, I'm looking at you on that one. You simply just plug it into your motherboard and you're basically good to go. Now for what is likely to be the main selling point and a reason I guess some may choose to go with one of these new Q5 drives instead of a standard SSD, is that you get a one year of data recovery services included in the price. With this, if your drive in any way breaks, you can just send it off to hopefully get your data recovered. If the data can be recovered, you'll receive your data back on a secure drive and the whole data kind of recovery progress takes around 15 days. Now, I must say that data cannot always be recovered, but in this case, what do you really have to lose? <laughs> your data, I guess. You could literally snap your drive in half and as long as the actual chips on the drive itself are fine, send it in to get the data recovered and sent back to you. To me, that sounds like a pretty sweet deal especially when you remember the price of these is cheaper than a standard SSD. So really, it's a win-win. So the Q5 comes in three capacities at 500 gig, one terabyte, and two terabyte, giving, I guess, something for everyone. And for every capacity, it comes in cheaper than a conventional SSD, and it'll be faster too. So Andy, this all sounds good, but what are those speeds actually like? Well, with NVMe, the more you pay, the faster the drive. So are the drives worth the money? can they compete with other SSDs on the market? Well, for what you're actually getting, these drives are decent enough. As mentioned, it's worth remembering that your bog standard kind of SATA drives, 2.5 inch drives, top out at around 550 megabytes a second read and 560 megabytes a second write. So in theory, it's not hard for any NVMe M.2 drive to be well, faster than that, even ones that cost less money. Now the Q5 drives are not meant to be the fastest drives going but they are meant to be reliable. They actually come with a three year limited warranty, a TBW or terabytes written of 531 terabytes and a 1.8 million hour MTBF or mean time between failures. And all of that is on top of that one year data recovery. Now, when it comes to speeds and testing, we ran our normal host of tests, which includes a file transfer to the actual drives. And we tested the 500 gig, one terabyte and two terabyte Q5 drives individually to give you the most accurate info that we can. Now, in terms of read speeds, the 500 gig is rated up to 2300 megabytes a second, whereas the one and two terabyte drives are rated up to 2400 megabytes a second. Now, this is where things get fun. In our testing on Crystal Dismark, we saw the 500 gig hit a whopping 2407 megabytes a second, whereas the two terabyte only hit 2308 megabytes a second. Only, I mean, it's still bloody quick. 
This is actually quite odd though and should be the other way around. But as you can see in the images, we have this right. Both are still very decent speeds. And then the one terabyte came in and just blew everything out of the water. 2,484 megabytes a second, taking the crown. And this is likely the drive that most people will buy, especially with the way that games are like Call of Duty, taking upwards of 200 gig in file size alone. Taking a look at write speeds, and well, I'm pretty impressed. Not because they're fast, but more because we actually beat the rated speeds on all three drives. The 500 gig was rated for a max of 900 megabytes a second write, and we managed to get 1,038. The one terabyte is rated at a max of 1,700 megabytes a second, and we got 1,844 megabytes a second. And the two terabyte, which is rated for a max speed of 1,800 megabytes a second, and wait for it, we managed to get a massive 2,044 megabytes a second in Crystal Dismart sequential tests. For clarity, this is 244 megabytes a second over what Seagate told us we should actually be seeing. I mean, this is great. Now, while these speeds may be off from your current Gen 4 drives, so are the prices. The Seagate Barracuda Q5 drives have a lot of performance and features to offer, and well, they won't break the bank in doing so. So the main question really is what about real world testing? I mean, you know, seeing numbers on a screen is one thing, but what about actually using them? Well, the last thing we did was a simple file transfer. For this, we used our 273 gigabyte Steam folder on our test bench. And I know we're slacking and need some more games, but this is our test bench for motherboard and CPUs. So it doesn't have as many games on it compared to our two terabyte GPU test bench, of which we use a Seagate Firecuda 520 for the very best speeds. Now we copied the whole folder and pasted it onto each drive individually. For this, the Q5 drives were actually placed into a Gen 4 slot on our Asus Crosshair uh, 13 Dark Hero board. So we kind of know we're going to be getting the very best speeds possible. So starting off with our 500 gig drive and working our way up, things were looking good at first. We saw a nice peak of around 1.07 gigabytes a second to start off with. This soon kind of plateaued down to around 550 megabytes a second for the majority of the transfer and somewhere around 60% of the way through, it just kind of dropped off and we were only seeing around 30, 35 megabytes a second transfer speeds. Now, obviously different drives using different controllers and different NAND and the way that they deal with small and large files differently and the same with kind of compressible and incompressible data that's probably why we started seeing such a variance. And it's worth just keeping that in mind. Moving on to the one terabyte drive, well, this did significantly better in our transfer test. It topped out around 1.5 gigabytes a second in the beginning, but again, we saw it drop quite a bit around the 60% mark. However, this drop wasn't anywhere near as bad as it was on the 500 gig. And speeds only went down to around 380-ish megabytes a second at the lowest point but soon jumped back up to over 500 megabytes a second until the last 10 gig of transfer, which ended up dropping down to about 80 megabytes a second. Overall, the one terabyte transfer was much smoother and even finished in a reasonable amount of time, especially when comparing against the 500 gig. And lastly, the two terabyte drive. Well, this was very similar to the one terabyte and the results look, well, quite similar. We saw an average high of around 1.5 gigabytes a second transfer, then around, again, the 60% mark, it just starts to drop off. After this, it seems to actually steady out at around 637 megabytes a second for the majority of the remaining transfer. And then it dropped down to about 112 megabytes a second to finish off that last 10 gig or so. Now, we didn't put a standard SATA SSD through the same test because as long as we actually got speeds above the theoretical max of 550 and 560 megabytes a second, then, well, there's no question as to what these drives are all about. And with the fact that they come in cheaper than its slower counterpart, well, you're really laughing all the way to the bank. Not only are you getting a drive that's faster and requires no cables, honestly, that's a highlight in my own kind of mind, you're also getting a drive that will keep your data safe and is cheaper. Now, while QLC-based drives aren't the fastest on the market, they do offer a great alternative. And with drives like this hitting the market, could this, I don't know, could this be the end of SATA-based SSDs at the same capacity? Yes, SATA will always kind of have a place for now with their larger capacities. And brands said to be bringing out 16 terabyte variants soon, you know that's gonna cost a pretty penny. And I guess with current boards on the market, whether it be B550, B560, uh, X570, Z590, including multiple M.2 slots, 
I don't know, just in my opinion, maybe NVMe M.2 drives will become the new standard a lot quicker than we actually thought. Either way, I wanna say thanks to Seagate for sponsoring this video and let me know in the comments section, what kind of drives and capacities are you rocking in your system right now? And in your kind of opinion, do you think NVMe will actually overtake SATA? And will we eventually see it, I don't know, being phased out, at least on drives up to say the same capacities, up to two terabytes? I'm really interested to see what you guys think. Either way, hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you know exactly what to do. And if you really actually love what we do, maybe consider supporting us through Patreon for lots of stuff, exclusive behind the scenes content, giveaways, and the all important one, access to our exclusive eTechnics Minecraft server. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one, guys. See you later. Bye-bye.